one of the really hot areas in science and religion lately has you know, been on cosmology, and it appears, in, at least from some perspectives, that the universe is fine-tuned such that life exists, and maybe even intelligent life, a little bit like us. Um, other folks taking more of a biological approach, like Simon Conway Morris would say, uh, convergent evolution, even, uh, the way that nature, if you will, seems to solve similar problems in similar ways over and over again also points to a kind of fine-tuning. Um, and But the dodge in cosmology, dodge, that's loaded, I shouldn't have said that. Um, this, the move, the intellectual move in cosmology seems to be to say, well, one way we can address this problem is to postulate that there are lots of universes out there. And if there are say millions and millions or billions of different universes, well, of course we would find ourselves in the one that's fine-tuned for us. How could we not? Okay? Which actually, sort of logically, has, has a certain kind of ring to it, right? That makes sense. We wouldn't be sitting around wondering about the fine-tuned character of the universe if in a universe that wasn't fine-tuned for us. So, of course, we would be in the right one. But at least um, uh, most folks working in that area, uh, when, they're, when they're honest with themselves, would admit there isn't the kind of scientific evidence you want for these other universes. Some would go as far to say, in principle, you cannot get it. But I'm gonna believe in other universes anyway, because it helps me avoid believing that there's someone who has fine-tuned the universe. I know that sounds shocking. That, oh, are they really thinking that? And I know some of these people, and they really do think that. You're absolutely right. Um, so that's just the question. And that's my way of filibustering, because I'm not sure what the answer is. <laughs> other than, OK, I, I should have some kind of signal for everyone that says, I'm going out on a, on a thin branch that I don't have a lot of confidence and don't have a lot of data. Maybe it's something like this. Uh, now is one of those moments. Look, it's easier, it's easier in some ways to reconcile with their pre-existing worldviews, right? To be able to continue to operate as if there's no God. Even though that scientific evidence seems to point in a particular direction. Why? Because it might make me change the way I do science, and I value that science. And maybe rightfully so, frankly. Okay? I talked to one young scientist who is very committed to evolution. And uh, he was at a conference, and he was mystified by this talk about, um, well, uh, it's, it's almost, it's the evolutionary argument for theism, <laughs> all right? And it goes something like this. Um, as Robert Hind, if you look at the back of the book, says, evolution doesn't guarantee that we will have truth-forming mechanisms in our head, but only we'll select for what works. Right? The kind of mind that's good for survival, reproduction. That's what natural selection guarantees we'll have, not a truth-aimed faculty. But if that's right, why do we trust it? In particular, why do we trust it in forming that belief in, say, evolution? Okay, and so philosopher Alvin Plantinga has gone from this, but it's sort of oddly reminiscent of C.S. Lewis <laughs> and others, um, to say theism and evolution is actually more compatible than atheism and evolution, okay? So this poor uh, evolutionary scientist, friend of mine, was confronted with this for the first time. He's so committed to evolution, he said, well, what's the minimum thing I can believe about a god to continue to believe about evolution? <laughs> I said, well, I guess it's some kind of deism. At least you want some kind of mind behind it that sort of said go at the beginning. I'm gonna put in in process some kind of thing that would lead to truth-aimed minds. He said, okay, then I'm a deist. <laughs> it's probably the first time I've run into somebody who from a commitment to evolution became a believer in some kind of a god. Um, but, and I think that maybe that is uh, a hint at the, the kind of psychology at least some people uh, might be experiencing. But again, I should be going like this. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.